So we're trying to go up there, Tommy, in uh, that, the brand new Ford F-150 all-electric lightning, but there's a problem. Yeah, so we were kind of cruising up this trail and originally we were gonna start this video higher up, but we've uh, kind of run into some ground clearance issues we wanna show you in the F-150 Lightning. Now this is, this is of course the all electric F-150 pickup. Um, and we're gonna do a little off-road review, seeing what it's like before we head to Alaska. And uh, the idea is we're gonna push it beyond what it can do out here. So that when we go to Alaska, we know when we do the dirt roads and the lighter trails, that'll be just fine. And in fact, the truck is going to Alaska tomorrow so this is our last day to kind of give it a shake out so should we show the issue yeah now we are on this slight uphill and there's this little bit of a dip down into this really small creek and i didn't even consider this to be a ground clearance issue but because of the length of the truck and the relatively small amount of ground clearance well we'll show you what's going to happen now this is the third vehicle i've taken up here in the last couple of weeks if you've been following uh tfl all tfl.com you would have seen that I've taken the uh, new Silverado ZR2 and the Bronco Raptor up here uh, and started the videos up higher up there where we bust out into the open. But uh, yeah, we ran out of ground clearance. And keep in mind, we're being gentle with this truck because we do want to be the first to drive it all the way up to Prudhoe Bay, Dead Horse. Uh, and if we break it, whoa, if we break it now, let me get on the side and show them, Tommy. Show them the ground clearance at you. If we break it now, we were not going to Alaska. All right, go for it. Hey everybody, Nathan here with a chance for you to win a very cool Resto Mod Classic Ford Bronco from Velocity Modern Classics and help the Boys and Girls Club of America. The good folks at Velocity took a 70s era 4x4 Bronco and popped a new 430 horsepower 5 liter Coyote V8 under the hood. They then upgraded the suspension with a 2.5 inch lift and put disc brakes on all four corners. Nice. To finish off the build, Velocity outfitted the Bronco with new wheels, BF Goodrich all-terrain tires and upgraded the stereo and AC. How hardcore you want to go off-road in this gem is up to you but you gotta enter to win it. Your donations benefit the Boys and Girls Club of America, which works to keep young people on the right track to graduate high school with a plan for their future. Enter at www.omaze.com slash offroad for your chance to win the Velocity Ford Bronco and help a great cause, the Boys and Girls Club of America. You're good. Yeah. Keep going. Oh yeah. I'm on something. Let me, let me go, let me show from the back. Maybe you can see what we're doing here, what's going on. So this truck weighs 6,800 pounds. We weighed it, which is a heck of a lot. And you can tell, even though it's got its good place. Here, can you get out of there with the camera better than I can? Yeah, probably can. So I think if I zoom on in there, you can see we are tapped out there on ground clearance over this little berm. And uh, one of the issues, of course, are the side steps on this vehicle, but I'm not quite sure. I think we got a little bit of clearance to the side step. We might actually be hitting underneath the vehicle and we're not quite clear of this obstacle. Ooh, your stick is making this hard here, Dad. Anyways, we are, I think, on the underbelly is what it feels like to me. Yeah, and the problem with being on the underbelly is that uh, that's where the batteries are. Well, <laughs> now I could probably force my way oh, yeah, through this, could. but if I got this thing high centered, we're out here by ourselves. And I'm, you can see, if you get, look at this angle, we're not quite clear of the berm, so we're not even fully clear of this uh, little dip. So, obviously, extremely long wheelbase, crew cab truck, short bed, but in its relatively stock configuration apart from the tires which we'll talk about in a second it doesn't have the clearance to go over this little berm so i think we're going to back it up and head down the trail that way and see what else we can find yeah and then we'll do a little walk around show you kind of we have modified it with one important modification i'll show you that in a second but why don't you take it off uh this uh, berm look i'm sure nothing would happen tommy if you kept going oh yeah i mean you scratched the bottom but but you know we, like i say we, we have one opportunity to be the first to go up to Alaska, uh, and I, I don't think we're going to get, you know, another opportunity to get another truck. <laughs> ah. There it goes. All right, so now back it up to the clearing. Let's see where we were hitting. 
Oh, it's this rock, Tommy. We hit on a rock. Come look. Right here. Come look. There's a car behind you. Oh, here comes the Toyota. So this was a rock. So all it took was one rock. And you can tell it. You can tell that was us because you can see the scratches. Uh, we're going down. Go for it. Okay. We're just backing up. I right, keep going, Tommy. You know, Dad, I think it was more than that because on the uh, we were hitting on I the driver. I can't hear a thing you're saying. We were hitting on the driver's side too. Okay. I right, keep going. So it wasn't yeah, just. Yeah, gotta go a little passenger. It wasn't just that one rock. There you go. Keep going. You're good. It's a big truck. Yeah, it's a it's a massive truck. So yeah, we were hitting on that rock. That's a great find, Dad. But we were also hitting on the driver's side, on the top of the berm. All right, now you don't want to hit this rock on the side. Yeah, start pulling. Start backing up. There's a Jeep coming the other way, too. What was that? I don't know. Something bound up. There you go. Keep going. Perfect. A little more uh, driver. Yep, keep going. Okay, now straight back. Just straight back. You don't want to hit, you don't want to hit that rock. Cool. You're good, yeah. Straight back. Straight back. It's really hard to modulate slowly. Well, there's no low range, is there? Well, that's not the issue. I think it's more throttle and brake programming. All right, we're out of the... You're fine. All right, you're out of the path, Tommy. You're good. Cool. Nice. Oh, wait, you're going to go into a campfire. Stop there. <laughs> Don't pull into the campfire. So, yeah, so that was a great find with that rock, Dad, but I think it was also tapped out somewhere underneath. Yeah, it was over tapped here. up into this. I know, this we're not going to light campfire. the battery on fire. <laughs> so let's take a peek underneath and see what we are looking at here. So, man, this stick makes it hard to film, Dad. You just open it up. Yeah, I'll open up the stick. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Let's see what we got going on underneath here. So you can see it's a pretty flat underbelly, which is really nice. Of course, the battery lives underneath the vehicle, and it does have plenty of protection underneath there. But even still, I'm not super confident. I don't want to go slamming that through some of these obstacles. Wow, look at all the traffic. I know. It's 4th of July here. Hey, by the way, if you're watching this and it's not 4th of July, happy 4th of July or post 4th of July. All right. A lot of people out here enjoying the Colorado wilderness, huh? So let's do the walk around of our F-150 Lightning and show some of the features um, and talk about some of the off-road goodies while we wait for this uh, line of Wranglers and Gladiators to clear. I know. So this is a basically stock F-150 with the exception of the tires. So this is the BFG Trail Terrain TA. Now what came on this originally was an all-season tire and then these are the factory wheels, a 20-inch wheel a little bit of an aero design going on. So one of the big crucial features when you're designing an EV is how do you maximize the range in terms of aerodynamics and wheels play a big part into that. Now this came equipped with these 20 inch wheels. Now if I were to use this truck on a regular basis off-road, that would probably be the first thing I'd change. I'd want to go to a smaller wheel so that would allow me a larger sidewall. Now you can spec this truck in 22s, which would be way worse. So I'm glad we don't have the 22s, but even on these 20s, um, I have first-hand experience of why 20s are bad off-road. If you want to see that video, check out the Land Rover Defender blowout vid. But yeah, a little smaller wheel, a little bigger tire would be nice. Now, why did we go with the Trail Terrain TA versus like a KO2 or a KM3? Because we didn't want to lose range. And we've got a video out there that may or may not be edited by the time you're watching this, where we actually uh, did a range test on these with and compared it to the stock tires and compared it to the 22s. So obviously, when we go to Alaska, we'll be on the Dalton Highway, uh, and up there, you have to go 250 miles between, well, anything. Uh, and that means we have to get as much range as possible so that we can hopefully get it to Coldfoot and charge up and then get it to Prudhoe Bay and charge up and then back down to Coldfoot. So that's why we went with them. We didn't want to go crazy to lose as much range. And even with that, we did lose a lot of range, Tommy. Yeah, and you'll, you'll see that video. It's pretty interesting. But if you look at the tread pattern, it is pretty beefy. It's not a all season by any means. You do have these pretty good sized lugs, maybe not as big as a KO2. And they're also snow rated, which is great for Colorado. Now, one of the big changes between the Lightning and a standard F-150 is actually underneath the rear. If you kind of want to shine the camera underneath there, let's talk about the suspension. So this is a fully independent rear suspension, and uh, that's different than a standard F-150, which will have a solid axle. And this vehicle is a dual motor setup. So there's a motor in the front, a motor in the rear. And do you see that skid plate way underneath there? Kind of that black one just in front of the spare. That is the skid plate for the rear motor. Um, because the motor is integrated into the rear axle there. So they want to keep that protected. Now, the downside of that is it is a pretty low hanging skid plate. 
So uh, kind of like a solid axle where you'd hit the pumpkin first, you do have a good chance of actually hitting that first, which is a little bit, a little bit something to keep, keep in mind. Are you motioning me that my fly is down? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to be a good. Thank you, Dad. That's very kind of you. Uh, the downside to this uh, truck, of course, is um, whenever you have an off-road truck, um, you're going to just uh, kill fuel economy, right? Because the truck is taller. You've got beefier tires and lugs in the tire itself. Uh, and so you end up with a compromise where you try to do a vehicle in a typical gas truck that you know gets okay fuel economy but is great off-road. With the Lightning, they have definitely have uh, gone toward the fuel economy side of things. Uh, well, so you're only looking at really nine inches of ground clearance, which you know is like a Subaru, which is okay, but it's not great. Well, fuel economy, <laughs> miles per kilowatt hour, right? Right, well, <laughs> it's all, it's all I mean, electric, yeah. efficiency. Yeah, efficiency. Look at that disaster that's happening down there. This is why I hate wheeling on the 4th of July. Look at this. <laughs> it's just absolute carnage. You got three people against two people. <laughs> Try to avoid going out on the 4th of July as much as possible. Now, part of that efficiency, right, comes down to um, minimizing the amount of air which gets trapped in front and around the vehicle. And to best aid in um, economy, right, you want a low front end. You don't want a huge amount of air rushing underneath the vehicle. So... OEMs now are moving to these low chin splitters, right? Yep. To kind of keep the uh, the air where it needs to be. And on the Lightning, not only do you have this chin splitter, but you have one that deploys below it. So it's actually got like this uh, active setup at higher speeds. Um, now the downside of that, right, is you do limit yourself on ground clearance on the front end. So if I take a peek here. Yeah, nine inches. Like yeah, I you said. mentioned, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, kind of tricky from an angle here, but right around nine and a half inches, inches yeah. to that front end. And on some off-road trucks, it's simple, right? You can just pull that off and get a lot more ground clearance. But because of the electronic component of this, I'm not so sure it would be quite that easy to get this um, removed. And then good news is we still have recovery points. So we've got tow hook there and a tow hook there in the front, real recovery points. Kind of a lot of plastic up here. We have active shutters for some of the cooling there and then parking sensors up here. So we do have a lot of kind of nice shiny material as well, but removing that um, aero component probably would aid in the off-road capability. You know, it's funny when I'm off-roading and, and I scratch the belly of a vehicle, I don't usually care because it's usually just another skid plate you're hitting, you know, but you know, we've taken everything from the Tesla Model X to the Model Y off-road and I always worry because I don't want to puncture the battery box. I'm sure it's very protected. Yeah. But you know, you puncture the battery box, it's like akin to throwing a cylinder in a gasoline engine powered car. You're not going anywhere, right? Well, I, more to that, you could have a thermal event as the manufacturers say. <laughs> which, but, which would start the forest on fire, is that what you're saying? But I really think that that is a... Oh, thank you, I appreciate yeah. it. Thanks for watching, man. Yeah. Um, that is not something I, I'm... All that. Oh, oh, thank, thank you. you, thanks love for watching. Gladiator. Yeah, love your gladiators. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. I don't know where I'm going with this. What I'm trying to say is that these, the battery protection on these trucks is so incredibly robust yeah. because Ford knows that when you're driving down the road, right? There's going to be rocks. There's going to be debris. I know that in my head, well, then but I don't know that it. in my heart. You got to believe it there too. Yeah, this just truck was designed to have, you know, um, objects run into the underside of the vehicle. So it's, uh, it's designed not to puncture. Here's my kind of call on this. I think it's pretty softly sprung. Well, let's go take it for a ride. Let's, yeah, go, show let's, let's go show them. Yeah. Can you let's help see, me off this yeah, let's berm? See how you, can, you can get out of this thing. Hold on. Let me see if you can. Ideally, you don't want to come this way, but you might have to run over a fire. Pl uh, yeah, you could do it, Tommy. Go forward. Yep. Uh, and then back up and avoid the uh, campfire. Okay. You can do it. Otherwise, you're going to have a really hard time. So go forward. Go uh, passenger. Yep. Passenger, hard passenger, hard passenger. Keep going, keep going. Hang, I'll, hang I'll, just trust hang, me. Hang on, hang on. It's what are you doing? Crazy. I got a. What are you doing? So this truck has different modes. Um, it's got normal sport and off road. Yeah. But every time you go into off road mode, it automatically locks the rear diff. And actually, that's one of the coolest things. We should talk about it. It's got a mechanical locker. Yeah, but I want to be able to go into off road mode without it locking the rear diff well, every time. I like I, it. Yeah, so it's unlocked now. All right. It makes it harder to turn. Look, it did it again. I know. Well, just Stop it. locking it. All right, there you go. All right, now go passenger hard. Passenger hard. Hard. Okay, now stop, 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 stop. Now go turn the wheel. Okay, 
Now come back. There you go. Yeah, go, go, go. Perfect. You're going to run over this big rock with your front tire. It's okay. Keep going. You're going to hit a rock right now. You're good. You're good. Yeah, you're going to go over the rock. It's fine. All right, hold on. I'm going to move a rock for you. Okay, come on. Come back. Come back. Yeah, you got it. Yep, keep going. Perfect. That's exactly right. Keep going, keep going, keep going. I'm going to have a nice uh, night camping out here. Okay, now stop. Go passenger. And you're going to make this turn and you're good to go. Here, I'm going to walk in front and you kind of talk about what it's like off-road and I'll get you coming through the, uh, through the little uh, gully here. Okay? Yep, sounds good. Oh, wait, there's a car coming. Hold up. Wait for the car. There's, one, there's a car coming, Tommy. A Bronco. Did you guys have a good night? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like fun. Yeah. Sorry, we're doing a little video. Yeah, <laughs> Are you guys from New Hampshire? I am. Oh, nice. Okay, I thought maybe the whole, whole lot of you. <laughs> no. All right. So this is the path that uh, Tommy's going to be going down where this Bronco is coming up. Uh, and these girls had camped here overnight. It's a path called Deer Creek. It's a really beautiful area uh, outside of Montezuma, Colorado. So if you guys don't want to come up here, this is a great place to go and do a little bit of camping. Or you can bust out way up to that. You can go up there and drive around. Uh, you only have about four months to do it in the summer. Howdy. Beautiful Bronco. All right. So this is what Tommy's going to be going over. I know you may be thinking to yourself, this looks like a dirt road. Um, fair enough, but it's more than that. Camera kind of flattens everything out, uh, but it's certainly a lot harder than we'll be doing when we go to Alaska, because the Dalton Highway is just a real dirt road. No rocks, no undulations, no beaver ponds, at least not right along <laughs> the road, I suspect. All right. Alright, so off-road in the F-150 Lightning. Now the first thing I notice is uh, with the dual motor setup, it's really tricky to kind of modulate the accelerator. Um, they, they probably could do a little bit more with the programming and off-road mode of having less throttle tip in. It's a little bit too sensitive um, when you're really trying to crawl slowly. Now I have been working on my two footing on this truck and that's starting to go a little bit better, which is good. So uh, with a little bit of practice, I think I can probably get the hang of it, but coming out of a gasoline vehicle is a little bit difficult to get that super slow, precise control that I want. Now, my dad mentioned that, you know, this vehicle doesn't have a low range. It really doesn't need one because electric motors make peak torque at basically zero revolutions per minute. So there's not a shortage of torque, even pointing out some of these really steep hills that we've been doing this morning. It's got way more torque than you could ever imagine to get up the stuff that you needed to. However, some of that control over some of these larger rocks is one of one of the, the big challenges. Now, it's very satisfying off-roading with a full electric vehicle because it's completely silent. And it's a really nice feeling to be able to hear the wind in the trees and the birds and kind of the rocks underneath the tires as they crunch along. It really is a, a, a nice feeling. So I, I am appreciating that to a large extent, something that is kind of not often talked about in the world of electric EVs when off-roading. And there's a huge potential for a lot of capability in a vehicle like this that just need to improve some of the angles a little bit more. Um, in terms of approach angle, departure angle, that kind of thing. Because, I mean, there's just an infinite possibility in what you can do with some of this vehicle's capability. I'm looking for a spot where maybe we can flex it out a little bit. Hmm. It's all kind of flat here. I'm looking for a spot where we may be able to flex it out a little and stay on the trail. But I don't think that's gonna happen here. You wanna hop in? Yeah, you could try to run up that rock. Yeah, I think we're going to run out of approach angle. I can try it.
really don't want to roll it over. Yeah, I think you'll hit. Yeah, it doesn't. So we've done that. We, we've kind of done some flex tests on the trail here. I think you don't areas. have enough approach. But yeah, it just doesn't have the approach angle. Right. So I was saying that um, there's a lot of potential for an incredible off-roader with an EV, right? Can you hold for a second. You, in theory, have a lot of control with the electric motors. Yeah. They need to kind of, I think, do some recalibration of the off-road mode. Well, tell me about it. It's just got way too much. It's too. Th it's too eager to accelerate too yeah, quickly. Yeah, exactly. The throttle tip in is too abrupt. It's too abrupt. Now, like you talk about, this is a really great thing about this EV. It does have a mechanical locking diff. So unlike the Rivian that has a dual motor setup or a quad motor setup, right, where it can simulate it, or even the Hummer has two motors in the rear, in the F-150 Lightning, you can uh, mechanically lock the rear wheels at the same speed. Yeah, the reason that's good is because we have found testing the Rivian off-road and even the Hummer off-road, when you don't have a locker, a mechanical locker, in other words, there's no like gears that lock in place, uh, and you're using software to simulate that, sometimes the software thinks very, very hard about where to send power, uh, and there's a moment of hesitation when you don't want a moment of hesitation. And with the locker, you have no hesitation. It's always sending you know, 50% to the left tire and 50% to the right tire. It's perfect. It is perfect, well, yeah. Of the, of the power that's going to the back. It's a little bit, I mean, the physics behind it is a little different than that. It, it, you actually have variable torque being applied to each wheel, but the same wheel speed. Because in an open diff, you have variable wheel speed equal torque. In a locked diff, you have same wheel speed, oh, it looks like differential quite, quite torque. a little bump where we could also yeah, high center ourselves. Should we see? <laughs> yeah, let's see. I always hate that <laughs> sound. Oh, it didn't like that. Parking sensors. Yeah, parking sensors. Let's see if it hits. Oh, it oh, didn't no, hit. Oh, no, it cleared that one that pretty good. well. Yeah, yeah that took was, it at a little bit of an angle. Yeah, that was good. So, yeah, I completely agree, though, Dad. There's another one where we could high center. You're 100% right about what you were saying, though. Um, in theory, having multiple motors means you can have active torque vectoring. But in practice, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, that's a, not a good sound. No, not a good sound. <laughs> in practice, the torque vectoring I don't think is as good in real reality compared to a traditional locking diff. Now we got a 4Runner behind us, so I'm going to scoop by, let him, let him pass us. Yeah, we're going to go a little slower than he is. Yeah. So um, let's wrap this video up. Um, so well, no, we haven't talked about the suspension. Oh, right. Well, I, I thought you talked about it coming across the little oh, look, beaver we can, pond we can area. show our articulation here, actually. All right, here. Get the camera. Why don't you show him? As soon as it's forward. Good, how you doing? Good. Make sure we're in park here. Yep, we are. Well, Why are we moving? Well, we're in park. Are you sure you're in park? Yeah, it's definitely in park. I've noticed that this truck, sometimes when you're in park, there's a little bit of like maybe six inches of. Oh, yeah, forward and backward. Backward, which is never good. Let's see how the articulation is here. Yeah, we're pretty much maxed out there. You can kind of. Kind of get a sense of that. Let me do this. Let me try backing up with the locker unlocked and uh -huh. we'll see if that wheel will spin. And then I can lock it up if it does spin. All right, yeah, give it a shot. All right, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Here we go. Okay, now you're in the, you're in the air now. All right. Okay. So that's locker unlocked. And if I gave it enough throttle, I could definitely power my way out of this. But all right, lock her up. Just for the the the, the gram, let's do the lock diff. So now the diff is locked. Are you ready? Yep. Look at that control. Wow, that's just yeah. That is a textbook example of why you want a mechanical locker right there. Yeah, beautiful. So that works really well, and it locked up quickly too. All right, you want to hop in? Yep. Oh, now I gotta unlock. Yeah, it. you're definitely locked up now. Yeah, now you're tearing the trail apart. Let me unlock it there. There we go. So one thing we were kind of noticing, um, both my dad and I, as we were cruising down this trail, is this thing is a very soft and compliant on-road ride. Very soft. It's almost squishy. It's almost floaty, which I love. I really love it. However, off-road... Hey, can you hold that? Hold this. I can put my seatbelt on. Off-road, it, it can be a little easy to get in a position where it feels bouncy. Not harsh, but kind of springy almost. Um, and, and you can, if you if you take a bump a little bit too quick, you can actually top out the front suspension and make this little thunk. So they could probably do a little bit more damping off-road. And maybe going forward, if they do like an off-road specific trim with active live valve technology, right? Yeah. I mean, you could take care of that super easily. But it's, uh, yeah, it, it's pretty similar to that off-road. 
to any other FX4 F-150. Yeah, I, I would think that's a great way of, of, of talking about it, right? So in, in the Ford lineup, you've got no FX4, right, base truck. Then if you go to the first level of off-roading, it's FX4. Now you've got this new tremor level, you know, and of course, then you get to the Raptor eventually. Um, uh, and now, of course, the Raptor 37 and now the Raptor R. But um, so, you know, let's say there's five different levels of off-roading F-150. This would be akin to the level two. Right. Uh, and it's because they made a compromise, right? They made it good for... Range. Range as opposed to uh, ground clearance. What kind of range are we getting using, you know, the battery? I think we're actually doing really well. We're not burning a lot of battery. Yeah, so we've been out here... Well, the first thing we're doing is, like, slow-speed crawling. Yeah. Um, typically, EVs are actually good at slow speeds. We've been out here on the trail for probably 35, 40 minutes. Something like that, yep. Let's go into settings. And we were at 57% we started, and now we're at 55. Yeah. So when you're going slowly, right... Unless you're looking to cover a huge amount of distance off-road, like in an overlanding situation, then maybe range would be concerned. But if you're just looking to cruise out to the trails for a day, for the day trip, this is more than plenty of range. Look, the other thing I like is why don't you show them your uh, battery heat uh, and your transmission temperature indicator. Now, every time I uh, reset the truck, it resets the trip, which is why it's saying 0, 0.0 miles per kilowatt hour, I promise. It's better than that. But yeah, up here you can see right. top left we have um, battery temp and motor temp, which is a great thing to... Kind of have there you go there's trip two over 600 miles 2.2 miles per kilowatt hour so that's uh that's been over our little vacation here up to the high country um zoom back out so that's a great point too right it is range and when you're going slowly i mean we were going basically all uphill to get up here using a lot of energy but now that we're going all downhill we're not using any and maybe even recouping a little bit although you can see at these slow speeds three four miles an hour you don't actually get a lot of regen going. And when you put it into off-road mode, it disables one pedal drive, so you have to use the brake. Now we got a little bit of a water crossing here. Now, the fording depth on this, isn't it like 18 inches? I think you're right, yeah. Something like that. It's not a whole ton. And this is a vehicle where I'd probably want to listen to that recommendation. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to submerge it. You know, battery. I'm not sure I'd want to go much deeper than their recommendation, although I'm sure there's been a lot of work and testing put into that as well. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, submarines are electric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but yeah, batteries and water sometimes mix and sometimes it depends. So I think pros locking diff is awesome. Yeah, huge amounts of torque and power. Yep. Um, these tires are working fantastically, by the way. Yep. Now we didn't air them down because honestly, we just can't sacrifice the ground clearance. Yeah, I don't want to go down to eight inches. That's a little too. Yeah. I mean, Look, here's here, here's. Hang on, I gotta find a place to. Or is this pulling over? He's pulling over. That's nice. He's got the right of way. That was nice. That was nice of him to do that. I'll, I'll give you oh, two of them. I'll pull over, let him yeah. go by. Yeah. So, so I'll give you my top five things I like about it off road, and then my top five things I don't like about it. Or do you want me to do the? Which ones do you want me to do first? Let me pull over. I'll let these guys go by. Well, I can just do it while you pull over. I'm not driving. Thanks. I'll let you guys scoot by here. Appreciate right, it. Now, I'll start with the things I I like about it. Okay. Number five. It's very quiet, uh, and you feel like you can hear, the, you know, Morning. Morning. The, the sound of the Pentastar as it passes you, <laughs> right? Or in yep. this case, the four liter, straight six. <laughs> so that's number five in terms of things I like. It's very quiet. Number four, um, I love the fact um, that, uh, you know, it's using electricity uh, and that, you know, we're not adding any gas or exhaust fumes to the great outdoors. That's nice, especially when you're going by like those campsite, right, where they're camping. Number three, uh, I do like uh, the amount of control I get with the throttle tip in. I think Whoa. Ford needs to recalibrate it. Yeah, but I think eventually- I think that's a negative right now, Dad. I don't think it's up to snuff right now. I, I think it's eventually it'll, it'll be a positive, but it makes it simple, right? There's no low range to engage, right? There's nothing to worry about. Um, number two, uh, I do like the fact that it's fully skid plated at the bottom. That's also one of these things that cuts both ways, but you know, you basically have a giant skid plate at the bottom. And number one, the thing that Ford did that was brilliant was they gave it a mechanical locker. So that's my favorite thing. Uh, now the things I don't like about it, number five, uh, it's heavy and you can feel the weight, 6,800 pounds. Uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a rock crusher, not a rock crawler. Yep. Um, num number four, ground clearance, uh, it, it doesn't have enough. Nine inches is just not enough. For, at least for Colorado. Yep. And uh, so can I can I add some two here? Yeah, I'd okay. like to put some in two uh, there. All right, go 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 three, two, one. Okay, three. The side steps obviously yep. are in the wrong spot. It's just not what we need. Yep. Um, number two, uh, I, I think the throttle programming isn't quite there yet uh, when you're trying to go slowly. You can kind of two foot it, and I'm getting better at it, but it still is a little bit abrupt. 
And what's your number one? Uh, as much as I like independent suspension, it's in this setup, uh, it's going to be hard to lift and hard to... Oh, great point. Yeah, very know, hard to modify, modify compared, yeah, to, a solid compared to a solid axle. Compared to a solid axle, yeah. So other thing, I, which is just a nitpicky thing, um, every time you go into the off-road mode, I mean every time, so I'm in normal mode driving around the street, I go into off-road, it automatically locks the rear diff. Yeah. And that's one of those things where I kind of like to use a rear diff when I need it. Otherwise, it puts a lot of wear on the truck and a lot of wear on the trail. You want to be considerate of that. So I'm going to turn that puppy off. Um, and then visibility is pretty poor. Yeah, but you know what? I was going to, I thought about that, and I was just up here on that video, all TFL as well. I was up here in the uh, uh, ZR2, which is Chevy's most off road worthy truck. Yeah. Uh, with the giant fake hood scoops. Uh, and this is a wonderful visibility. Let's face it, Tommy. Full-size trucks are just really bad at, at providing visibility. Well, they are now. Have you ever been in like a 90s Ford yes, or a 90s yeah, we GM a square, truck? We had a square body Chevy. Oh, fantastic visibility. But modern-day trucks have such tall front ends and such small windows. So the Tacoma's worse. The Silverado is definitely worse. Tacoma? I mean, not Tacoma. It's oh, Tundra. Tundra, okay. Tundra's worse. Yeah, like TRD Pro's worse. I've just been in that. So I, I, I can't ding it for that because even though it's horrible, it's not as horrible as it could be. Does that make sense? I do think there's a lot of potential here, though. I mean, the uh, instant torque is just incredible. The mechanical locker is the best of all the EVs. Um, I, I think that there is a huge amount of skid plating underneath, even though we're being a little bit of a baby about it. I think it's probably just fine. I think with a little bit of work, this thing could be pretty cool, right? Remove the side steps, put a rock rail on it. Um, I've seen people online already put leveling kits on them, so maybe add a little bit more clearance that way. And Yeah, but everything you add on it, every bit of off-roady goodness is going to take down the range well, every you, bit you reduce fuel economy when you change yeah yeah but with fuel Keep economy gas has so much more caloric energy right this has the equivalent of four gallons of gas with a 130 kilowatt hour battery 31 kilowatt hour right. battery so let's talk about the competition before we wrap this up as we go down the trail head, head on back um you know toward uh, montezuma yep. uh, uh, first and foremost obviously a hummer uh, EV, um, you know, that is a dedicated off-road truck. I suspect it would be much better off-road. Uh, it's just, it was designed and built according to their chief engineer. This is what he told me, to be GM's, like, moonshot off-roader. Not pickup off-roader, not SUV off-roader, just their best ever off-roader. So, you know, once we get our hands on it and take it up here, we'll have a better sense for it. I've taken it off-road, but I did it at their proving ground, and that's always a little suspect, right? Because they're going to have you go over things that they want you to go over. Now, how about the Rivian? What do you think of yeah, that? Yeah, the Rivian's better off-road. <coughs> it's got um, height adjustable air suspension. It's more maneuverable. It's, uh, it's, I think the throttle program's a little better in the Rivian. Um, this, is, this is like a standard F-150 off-road with a lot of power. And, I mean, it's like you said, it's basically an FX4. It just doesn't quite have the same clearance. It doesn't um, have the same maneuverability as a Rivian. Uh, but it's not really intended to be an off-road truck, right? It's intended to be a good all-around truck for everyday lifestyles, for hauling, um, perhaps occasional towing. It's not designed, it's not marketed as an all-out rock crawler, so that's something to keep in mind. And we have taken uh, the Tesla Model X off-road, we did that one because... Well, that's just trash, that's really bad off-road. <laughs> because it has air suspension and it has an off-road setting. That air suspension, though, in the max height, I think is less than the ground clearance on a yeah, standard it, like yeah, and then the, and then that top of that uh, <coughs> suspension bit, you, you can't even put yeah, off-road tires on control it. Control arm, yeah, yeah, pretty much limits what you so, can put on. So until the Cybertruck comes along, any current available Tesla off-road, I would be is a hard no, just a hard don't even think about it. Uh, and then you know the rest of the off-roady vehicles out there are zero, right? Because you can't really do the Mach E is not going to go off-road, the ID4 is not going to go off-road, the uh, EV6, Dynamic 5, I'm just going through my head all the EVs that are out there and available. Know, you know what they should put in this, which would really help? Right. Ford has a system called, what is it called? It's a one-pedal trail assist system, yeah. where it kind of simulates two-footed driving using one pedal. Yeah. They have it in like the Bronco. I think they may even have it in the Ranger. So they should put that in here? That would be a really cool thing I mean, to have I mean, in here. I mean, we don't, we don't have like hill descent control, right? I don't see that in here. Uh, I don't think we do. Yeah, no, exactly. That's true. I mean, we've got one-pedal drive, which is disabled and off-road. Yeah, that's all we have. And locking diff. Yeah. Uh, and then, then if you really right now want to go electric, um, I would highly recommend you look at one of the Jeeps, the, the 4 by es so Well, the, the plug-in hybrid, yeah. The, yeah, the, yeah, the Wrangler 4 by e or the Grand Cherokee 4 by e are just, you know, naturally born off-roaders. So uh, both of those will do this much better than, than um, of course, this will. But they're plug-in hybrids, and you get about 20 miles of range 
give or take. Well, let us know what you think in the comments section. Yep, and thanks for watching. As always, this is Roman. Remember, next time uh, we're going to be taking this uh, to Alaska, so there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, Northern Lightning Amps to Alaska videos coming every Sunday over at TFL Truck. Uh, Tommy, thank you, and thank you for not breaking the truck. Yeah, so we thanks can for having me. To Alaska. It was right. fun. See you guys next time. Ciao.